Welcome to this year's Christmas party seminar. Um, I'm Millie, I'm the staff writer here at Venues and Events, and this is Emily Morby, um, our lovely concierge manager. Hello. Um, now, if you've been to this seminar before, you might be used to us just doing a rundown of all the different party packages on offer, but we're going to do something slightly different this year. Um, you should all have a magazine on your seats or in your bags, and I assume you had some when you came in already. What we're going to do is run through what we think is the most important, interesting, useful and fun content in the magazine. And obviously you can take it away with you and read the rest at your leisure. Um, but we're just going to highlight what we think is the best to know in there right now. So first up, what's new? Hello. So um, on the Square Mill Concierge team, one of the most commonly asked questions is what are the hottest new venues and restaurants to host a Christmas party? There are obviously hundreds that we could talk through. We don't have the time, unfortunately. We wanted to run through a few sort of really unique offers this year for you just to give you a bit of inspiration. So first up is Somerset House. Now, obviously, Somerset House have been running amazing Christmas parties for many years. However, this year, for the first time, they're opening up their East Wing, which is a 300 capacity venue or space inside a venue. You can also hire the ice rink as well, which has always been available for up to 200 guests. And you can also hold drinks and canopy receptions there as well. So it can be used in conjunction with both rooms, the East Wing and the ice rink as well, so up to 500 people. And also they do have a screening room for any of your colleagues that are looking for a festive film as well. So definitely worth checking out. It's an iconic venue if you wanted to this year. Next on our list is Toy Room. So they are located in London's West End. Um, they are a members only boutique and they've recently moved to the London Palladium, so a relatively new space for them as well, only in September. Um, they've got a really amazing array of three private dining spaces and a capacity of up to 450 standing as well. The three spaces are the main club room, which can accommodate up to 415 guests standing for a reception. They've also got a Teddy's Lounge, which spans three amazing arches, including a colour-changing bar, which is available for up to 220 guests as well. And also Frank's Bedroom, which is available for 80 people standing again for a reception. Um, Six Stories on Soho is the fifth venue in the Cam and Hooper's portfolio as well. And this really is an amazing new venue. They've recently just started opening Christmas party inquiries as well. So definitely give these guys a call. It's located, as the name suggests, in Soho Square and is restored from a townhouse that boasts six unique venue spaces. It includes private dining rooms, private bars and a private restaurant, all available for really good knees up. Um, and also can accommodate, as you can see, 300 standing guests as well. So this November, the West End will gain 4,000 4, square metre event space just in time for this New Year's Christmas party season. So Queen's Ice and Bowls opens on the 16th of November officially, um, will open for Christmas inquiries, um, and it conforms of an ice rink, 12 bowling lanes, two bars and a new diner as well. They do have a number of dining options and group party options available for anything from 15 guests to a whopping 850 standing reception. Definitely worth giving the venue a call directly or emailing to find out more information their packages um, available now. So Once Upon a Time is a slightly different um, venue. It's a new pop-up which launched this Christmas. We will be talking a little bit more about this later on but we wanted to just put it on your radar as it is a really amazing unique event space and we'll come back to that a little bit later on but just remember this one. And also next on to the restaurants, again, there are so many, so we just wanted to really highlight a few for you. First up is Strut and Gluck. Oh. <laughs> it's more of a traditional venue, um, and they actually only serve turkey dishes. There are vegetarian options available as well, but it has a beautiful music room that seats up to eight guests downstairs among sort of vinyls and radios, as you can see here from the image. So a really lovely space for more intimate private dining experiences with a smaller group. Also, Shack Fuyu, again this year, and they've got a lovely private dining room downstairs, maximum capacity of up to 16 guests. They will take bookings from up to, from eight guests to 16. And again, it's a really perfect space for a smaller Christmas party as well. 
So the team behind the steamed bun sensation bow um, now have a beautiful private dining room, again, for up to 19 people. Usually this restaurant doesn't take bookings, the queues are out the door, so we were thrilled to know that they've got a private dining room now that you can hire exclusively for any private dining experience, but especially for Christmas. Um, and that's definitely one to keep on your radar as well. Lastly, um, the Ivy Chelsea Garden, which is located on the King's Road. Again, perfect for any sort of intimate private dining parties. It opens on the 24th of October officially for private hire. Uh, 30 guests can be seated on one long table or up to 50 standing for drinks receptions as well. Thank you. Um, so throughout the year, we keep our eyes peeled for what we think are the hottest themes and trends coming up for Christmas. And it would be a shame not to pull your attention towards immersive parties. Um, now, for those of you who aren't au fait with the term immersive, it's basically a way of describing an event where the guests become participants in any given theme. Popular examples include the likes of Secret Cinema, um, Yumi Bum Bum Train, and Bumpus and Pa, who are currently running the dinner at the Twits experience at the Vault, which I'm sure you've all heard of. Now, you're probably wondering why this type of event would be good for a Christmas party. Uh, we spoke to Suze Mountford, who's the founder of immersive dining company Gingerline, and she thinks that Christmas is the time of year to be brave and to sort of push the boundaries. So, how do you do it? First up, the venue. It's best to find your venue first and then fit the theme around it. This is exactly what the Art of Dining is doing. Um, they're holding a Tudor feast at Sutton House, which is one of East London's most historic venues. And it means that the venue dressing is already done for you, so it saves on budget as well. Next up, theming and decor. Obviously, you can get a specialist in to do that for you, but it's also clever to get an off-the-peg option. Um, we like the sound of the O2's 12 Days of Christmas theme, um, which will feature three floors filled with experiences from the classic Christmas carol. Um, that includes a five-ring gypsy fair and a party room with drummers drumming. Catering. Um, food must be fun. Um, we're seeing a move away from sit-down dinners and much more interested in food stations and interactive experiences. Um, for inspiration again, check out Ginger Line. Um, they usually have their guests sort of plucking food from trees or diving into ball pits to pick out their cocktails and things like that. So it is really, really fun. Entertainment is, of course, a very important part. Um, actor-led experiences are becoming really popular, um, but with a broad cross-section of guests at a Christmas party, just try and temper how out there you go with it in case it makes people feel a little bit uncomfortable. Um, and finally, staff. People obviously tie an event together, especially an immersive party. Um, it means sort of tying down your theme really early on so that staff have plenty of briefing, maybe some one-off training. Um, and basically, if you want any more information on running these sort of parties, it's far more detailed, and that's in um, a big feature in the magazine, so take that away and have a good read. So as well as keeping our eyes on emerging trends, we're always looking for new fun extras to add in to your Christmas party. So if you're holding a pre-party reception or doing the whole do at the office, um, why not get the grub from Harrods Food Halls? Michelin starred Tom Kitchen um, has created a range of canapes, main dishes and desserts that you can all order and take them to go for an event. Um, something to cool your guests off on the dance floor, which I'm sure they'll always need. Um, Pop tails by Lap make fruit ice lollies, laced with vodka, of course, and they come in a variety of shapes um, in line with your theme. Uh, the lolly sticks can also be branded or have a message put on them, like a hashtag if you have one for your Christmas party, so that's on brand as well. Um, and finally, um, Nitrogen Ice Cream Specialist for Winters has introduced a mobile unit, so they can pop up at your Christmas party, and they use liquid nitrogen to make sorbets, ice creams, and yogurts, and you can have them in peanut butter cup flavor with the cereal crunch topping and things like that. It's really reasonable, and it starts at five pounds per person, and that's for a minimum of 100 people as well. So it's pretty reasonable, I think. It's a nice, fun extra. So if you want a change from those casinos that we all see at a lot of our Christmas parties, um, let's introduce you to the MB. Um, the team will come to your event and drop a crystal in all of your guests' glasses, um, and then the expert will come round and examine them, and at the end of the event, one person will take home a real diamond worth a thousand pounds. 
Um, so if that's not an incentive to get people along at your party, I don't really know what it is. <laughs> um, for the photo booth fans among you, um, you'll like the bird cage. Um, the eight foot gilded booth has a red velvet floor, as you can see, and a three foot swing, which allows two guests to sit, swing and spin 360 degrees. Um, it comes with a professional photographer um, and it hosts, um, hosts are in full costume as well and it starts from about £1,349. So it is a bit on the pricey side, but I think we'd all agree we'd like to see our colleagues <laughs> or our bosses doing that. Um, and finally, if you have a smaller group to entertain, um, why not book your group in to see the new West End musical Aladdin? I've been to see it and even though it isn't meant to be a pantomime, it basically is. Um, so it suits Christmas really well. Um, Encore Hospitality, who are on stand M17 today, um, are doing champagne packages alongside the show. They start at £172 per person, and that includes the price of the ticket. And I mean, tickets are sort of verging on £80.90 at the moment. So for not much more money, you get the whole hospitality experience as well. So it's well worth the money. Fantastic. Um, next up, I want to just talk through uh, the organisers' guide. So, hopefully, we've now shared a few of our top tips with venues and restaurants, and given you some real inspiration for some creative ideas as well. Um, but as a venue organiser and event organiser, we know that Christmas parties are the daunting bit. But fear not, we have a few lovely tips and hints to hopefully make it go a lot smoother for you. So first up, obviously the budget is key. Confirming your budget with your boss is always a little bit daunting and often they don't want to put their hands in their pockets. But when you do have that conversation, it's always worth reminding them the government does give an £150 uh, tax break per head for the annual Christmas function. So definitely worth mentioning if they are a little bit tight with things. Um, if you are a smaller group as well, it's definitely worth thinking about saving the pennies on all-inclusive packages and shared parties. Now, shared parties, there's a lovely array of venues that we work with here that offer shared parties. If you want a bit more of a buzzy atmosphere, want to be part of a bigger group, but also still want to be on your own table, then shared parties is definitely an option for this as well. Um, and with the all-inclusive package, is many venues will also offer these as well so it's always worth making sure that you ask in advance when you are speaking to them directly don't be afraid to negotiate with your suppliers or the venues as well um, don't be put off by their costs or by your budgets it's definitely worth having that conversation with them because they may be able to offer you a deal early on or go through exactly what they can offer for your budget so don't dismiss them as too expensive before you have actually had that conversation with them directly Failing all of that as well, it's really important to ring fence the essentials. Obviously, food and drink and entertainment are going to, to all be essential items. Um, we would say if you are looking to have plus ones for your colleagues, if you are looking to save money, scrap that. Everybody just wants to party with their colleagues anyway, so that's definitely a way to save money. Setting the date is also <coughs> obviously very important. We know that people's social calendars and diaries are really busy, but once you've locked down that date, fantastic. But it's really worth making sure that you do consider everybody in that as well. Um, December, obviously, we know is going to be the best time for a Christmas party. Everybody is in the festive spirit. That's absolutely brilliant. But also, January is a good option as well, especially if you're looking to thank everybody for the 12 years of hard work that they've done and make it more of an annual end-of-year party. January in itself, is usually very cost effective and you can get some really good deals early January as well. Avoid November if you can. Um, it's really difficult to conjure up festive cheer in November with your colleagues. If it's right at the end of November, maybe, um, but it is very difficult. So if you can stick to December and maybe January, that's often a lot better as well. Um, Thursdays and Fridays, obviously in December, are going to be the most popular dates. They are also going to be the most expensive because they're most in demand. If you can convince your boss and your colleagues to host a party on a Monday or a Tuesday, there's a lot more cost-effective options available. You'll be able to get a lot more for your money. It will go a lot further. If they can battle a really early week hangover, I'm not sure everyone can, but if you can convince them, it's definitely worth thinking of those options. You can get your perfect venue for little, a little of the cost as well. And also lunch options. Most people think of dinner or evening receptions, but lunch is a really, really good option as well. They're often a lot cheaper, and also your colleagues will be really happy to have that time out of the office as well. 
And again, we briefly touched upon it earlier, but when choosing the venue, don't just think about your boss and what he wants, and if it's close to where he lives, it's really important that you consider all of your guests and also the junior ranks as well, who've worked really hard all year and have been looking forward to the Christmas party bash. Timings as well, it's really important that you consider all departments. If there is a department that's got a big deadline on a Friday and you're dragging them out on a Thursday night, spirits are not going to be as high. They'd much rather do it the week after. So really important you consider everybody with the timings when picking the venue and the date as well. Now, entertainment. So this is key to any successful event as well. Um, in terms of going for tribute acts, we would always make sure or always recommend that you go for the tribute act over a real band in terms of costs as well. So we would say think slide over Slade, for example. Um, it's much more cost effective. You're not selling tickets for anything. So definitely go with the tribute act. And after a few glasses of champagne, people won't even remember anyway. It's fine. Um, background music um, should cover all the bases as well, so really good idea to get an acoustic um, sort of band or guitarist in as well that can play sort of slower songs or less upbeat songs beginning of the night and then can kick start the party with more upbeat songs later on. So you've kind of got two things for your money there as well, so really good to consider the acoustic and the guitarist as well. Table, strolling and entertainers, so magicians or anybody sort of going around getting the crowd going. We would always recommend that you send them out really early to sort of break the ice with your colleagues and your guests as well. And again, if you are on a bit of a budget, get them out really early, get everybody in a sort of laughing <coughs> mood and breaking the ice, and then you can just put you know, an iTunes playlist on later and it'll be fine. That's all you need. And again, speakers are a really good idea if it's a more corporate function. So if you've got a corporate crowd and you're looking for an afternoon speaker, there's some really good um, acts that we do have available. Speakers Corner are fantastic for this. They can do more serious or more celebrity-based ones as well, but it's definitely a good option as an afternoon of more sort of serious bash. And of course, photo booths. So Millie briefly touched upon Birdcage earlier. Fantastic for the more extravagant of us as well, and if you've got the budget, it sounds like a fantastic option. But obviously there are a lot more cost-effective photo booth options available as well. It really is a great memento to remember the party, and if you are the organiser, it's great for your guests to go away and just know how much you've put into that particular party and that they've had a fantastic time as well. There's always going to be a dress-up box with photo booths as well, and that will guarantee laughter, so a really good sort of beginning or end to your party as well. The next day, so just because the party's ended doesn't mean that your management and organisation finishes. So if you are giving out goodie bags, we'd always recommend that at the end of the night for people, it's brilliant. Um, include water and maybe a midnight snack for them because they'll be a little worse for wear and they'll definitely thank you in the morning um, with that hangover. And um, again, with a survivor's breakfast. So whether you want to go all out to bring in a caterer or just put some bacon sandwiches on for your guests and your colleagues the next day, they'll definitely thank you and that will be a perfect end to a perfect night. So in this last section of the seminar, we're going to give you uh, the nuts and bolts of some of the packages detailed in our venue directory, which is on pages 107 to 127 in the back of the magazine. Um, now in there, we've got about 170 venues listed, so you'll thank us we're not going to go through all of those, um, but we're going to go through um, some of the venues that are actually here with us today and let you know their stand numbers, so you can go and say hello afterwards and perhaps book in your Christmas party. So first up, the views from, um, the views from Aquashard will certainly make your party the talk of the town. Um, the PDR can seat 22 guests, um, while the Gin Wing can hold 110 people standing and the Tea Wing can hold 150. Prices start at £55 per person and the Tea Run stand R2 if you want to go and chat to them. Um, with suitcases on the wall and plenty of Latin paraphernalia, Barrio Soho isn't a tra traditional option, um, but it is a hoot for a party and it's probably going to be responsible for our hat over <laughs> Friday. Um, prices start at £14.95 per person, so it's really reasonable, um, and the venue can hold 90 seated or 175 standing. Um, you can find out more about what the group's other three venues are doing for Christmas as well on stand R10. Um, a big group now, D&D London, has 39 options across the UK, um, so they're bound to have something for everyone. Uh, we like the sound of the grown-up playground at South Place Hotel. Um, we hear there's going to be real snowfall, so we have to wait and see what that actually is. Um, the team are on stand R14, so definitely go and say hello to them as well. Um, Gordon Ramsay um, has the capacity to hold anything from a private dinner to um, a party of a whopping 700. 
Um, so for more info, head to stand R30 and they can talk you through all of their options as well. Um, and finally from me, in the West End is the Grade 2 listed Adelphi building and that's where Smith and Walensky are. You've probably all got the voucher from them in your show bags. Um, it's an American state house and it's offering menus from £58 per person this year for Christmas. Um, and it can hold up to 240 guests as well. So it's a nice big venue uh, right in the West End. Uh, they're on stand R31, so do go and say hello to them as well. We briefly touched upon Once Upon a Time's new Christmas pop-up earlier on. So as I said, they're opening on the 24th of November, taking inquiries. And it's definitely one worth checking out. Their theme this year is the Little Treasured Toy Shop and is located in Mayfair. It's a really unique, um, different venue and one that might not be around next year. It's so definitely worth checking out. As I said, they can do shared parties um, from 10 people and then exclusive events for all the way up to 250 guests. Their packages start from £125 per person, but that does include drinks reception, three-course meal, all the entertainment, everything. Um, and they can do a seat capacity, uh, again, of 280 and in groups from 10. So it may sound a little bit more on the expensive side, but they are a really unique venue to watch as well. They can be found on stand F1. <laughs> Um, the Corinthia Hotel is, is more of a traditional, obviously, hotel venue, but it is a really stylish venue for all of those bookers out there looking for something a little bit more corporate or a little more traditional. They can dress the spaces amazingly as well. Their prices start from £145 per person, so again, a little higher end, but you do get a lot for your money as well. Their seated capacity is 180 for a dinner, and their standing capacity is 400 as well for a drinks reception, and they can be found on stand F32. Next up is Ministry of Sound. So most people would have heard of Ministry of Sound. They opened in 1991, became a bit of a phenomenon on the dance scene, but they've also got a massive corporate relationship and, and reputation as well with us. So really, really great to check them out as well. Um, the prices are really reasonable. They start from £30 per person, um, a seat capacity of 200 and a whopping 1600 for standing as well. If you've got huge numbers, this is definitely one worth checking out as well. And they're just by South Bank, so really, really close. Their stand is F31, so talk to them about any Christmas packages you have as well. As well as venues, we do work with some event agencies as well. Um, X Events are on stand G35 this year, and they offer a complete management service for a range of bespoke events. So their parties are usually combined with creative theming and entertainment, but lovely cuisine as well. So again, G35, X Events, if you want to talk through something a bit more bespoke. We also work with Party Ingredients and they are an exclusive caterer for an impressive lineup of livery halls, so Sadler's Wells, Ironmongers Halls in and around the city. Um, and Christmas parties are a strong point for them as well, so definitely check them out on stand E35 and they'll be able to talk through some catering options with you as well for more information. And lastly is Awesome Events as well and they're on D35. They're more known for kind of their shared party ideas. It ranges from £70 per person as their starting price, very reasonable, and again, that will be an all-inclusive package as well, but they do offer exclusive themed events as well. So D35 for awesome events. And the Square Mill Hub. Some of you may have seen us already when you've come up from the vaults. We are situated literally on the ground level, a big white sofa stand. Hopefully you can't miss us. We are here, the concierge team are here to answer any questions you might have about Christmas parties, anything you're struggling with, if you just need some ideas, we can talk through venues with you or direct you to certain stands that you are particularly interested in as well for your Christmas party ideas. So do come and see us and we can hopefully help you further. Well, thank you very much for listening to us. As I mentioned, in the magazine, there's plenty more inspiration. There's corporate gift ideas, cocktail inspiration. Uh, we've trialled some parties out as well. So I hope there's plenty in there um, for you in, to enjoy. Um, there's all the contact details as well of all the people that we've mentioned earlier in the seminar. Um, if you have any questions, me and Emily are going to hang back now for about five or ten minutes. So feel free to come and say hello. I've got business cards if you want to ask at a later date. But yeah, thank you very much and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you.